Hello, hello, my name is Sophia and this is an audio version of my blog entry entitled Two Mario Apology Locations in One, Kadyrov's Men Are Back. Introduction. My previous blog entry was a geolocation of a group of pro-Russian Chechen men engaged in a ground battle in Mariupol, Ukraine. It seems that they either have been busy or enjoy the overall attention they're getting because suddenly there were other videos of them online, which is great because the more data we get, the more likely it will be that they will post something they shouldn't and be held responsible for it. The video that I chose to cover on this blog entry is interesting because it spans across two different locations, both geolocatable, so this time we got a two-for-one deal. Yay! The video! A few days ago, I came across a video in which it is visible a group of Kadyrov's men in a residential area shooting at something, likely filmed on the 24th of March 2022. The footage was recorded by the pro-Russian Chechen group themselves and provides a good view of the area. It starts with them taking cover in a structure already damaged, surrounded by big residential buildings, and then panning around, giving us a good panoramic view of their location. The video, which is almost two minutes long, cuts at the one minute and 35 second mark to show a long road ahead, very different from the initial view. Feel free to watch it to get an idea of what we'll be geolocating, you can also try to pick up any details to see if you would follow the same path I did in order to geolocate the man. So let's see the video. I have it on Telegram here. It is at two times speed, so it'll be quite fast. We can see the man here, they're shooting at something towards that side. There are residential buildings here. At some point they're shot back. You can see that there's some... Wait, I'm sure it's coming in. Okay, so if you focus on this section, because you see they're getting shot back here. And this group is hiding, taking cover in this sort of building. There's, we need to figure out what this is. And they keep looking that way. I'll just wait because it'll move in a second. And there you go. Okay, so we have some interesting stuff. You can see more buildings. This is interesting. Suddenly that section does have buildings. There's more buildings. So there's like an open section. There's cars. So it could be some sort of parking area. And this is the second location. So we have a long road ahead, the vehicles coming this way. You can see there's more residential buildings on this side. There's something there, very interesting. And there's maybe a mountain or a hill on this section. So let's examine it and click it. So where to start? Although most of the video covers the first location where this battalion is seen in active combat, even providing us with a full 360 degree panoramic view that was very thoughtful of them, thank you very much. The second part immediately caught my eye. I spotted a landmark that would help me narrow this down fairly quickly. A mountain hill in the distance, there you go. Unless you're in the middle of a very mountainous country such as Switzerland, these sorts of features are great to figure out the general area and the orientation of the footage. In order to make it less confusing, I hope, I have decided to name them based on the order in the video. For that reason, the first one, first geolocation, will be named geolocation 2, because it's the bit that we see from minute 1, 34 seconds to minute 1, 58 seconds. And the one afterwards will be referred to as geolocation 1, because we see it from the beginning till 1 minute 33 seconds. So, geolocation 2. This section of the video starts at the 1 minute 34 second minute mark and ends with the video. Below you can see the mountain or a hill perhaps that caught my eye. See, this is very useful. Geolocation of the footage. We already know that this video was recorded in Mariupol, Ukraine. So if we go to that region of the globe using Google Earth Pro, you quickly spot the only high elevation area fairly quickly. So if we grab our Google Earth Pro and then zoom in it, you can see this area is elevated. So let's move it a bit. See, everything is flat apart from this. There you go. Very useful. Off you go. We know that at the time of the recording of the second part of the video, which is geolocation 2, the one we're doing, the fighters could see the mountain in the distance. I also know that recently I have geolocated a Chechen group on the coast, 
So I'll start my search in that area as there's some chance they might still be in the same region. So this is where it was geolocated before. So it's very likely that it should be more or less in the same area, assuming it's the same battalion. So Google Earth Pro has this amazing feature of elevating the ground, monuments, towers, etc., which is very useful at the moment. We can see below the view of the mountain from the area marked above. As I just showed you, still same one. Off you go. The mountain shape is useful, but we need more detail to help triangulate the footage. I have selected three features from the frame below. So we have the mountain in dark yellow, so there's a mountain shape. We have the monument on the left, look at that, very useful, definitely. And the direction of the road ahead, so you can see how it's a bit parallel to that section. We know that the sea will be on our left, facing south, so this road is facing west. Maneuvering the map a bit on Google Earth, you quickly spot this area. We are now facing the mountain in a way that the shape visible above this one here is similar to the one we see now, this one here. There's a monument on the left marked with a tower symbol, this one there, and we have a road facing east, west. So if we get our Google Earth Pro and then we maneuver it, so we're facing north, you can see the north symbol is pointing there. Just zoom out a bit. So this section there is our area of interest. You have the sea at the south, we're pointing north and we want a road that goes from west to east and you have a few of them so there's one there's two there's three and so on but we want to be able to see that mountain hill whatever that thing is called so we'll just position ourselves and it'll be more or less here there we go I'll show you a bit better in a second. So verifying geolocation 2. Now that we have a good guess of our geolocation, we need to find a way to confirm our findings. In the image above, you might have noticed the little icons around the map. There are photos geolocated and submitted to Google Earth Pro. Sometimes they're also visible on Google Maps by users. Luckily for us, we can spot one of those icons by that monument. Look at that. We can click on it and see if the photo of the monument matches the one we saw on the frame above. So if we grab again our Google Earth Pro and we scroll a bit to our little monument there, you can see the symbols and you click on it and here is a very useful photo for us. And off you go again. So it does, we can watch them side by side now, look at that. So on the left, we have a photo of the monument taken with the coast on a photographer's back. So we know that the coast will be this way, south, and this is north, this is west, and this goes east. And then on the right, we have a screenshot of the video we are geolocating. Remember, you can see this in the video. Street confirmation. The information above is already enough to confirm the location. I like to go a step further whenever possible to leave no margin for doubt. Ideally, we would check Street View, but there's no Google Street View available. And this is where Yandex comes in handy. If you haven't heard of Yandex before, allow me to give you some basic details. Yandex is a search engine, just like Google, but developed by a Russian corporation. If you haven't been using Yandex for image reverse search, you're missing out. They are the best at that task by far. They also have a great coverage in terms of street view, especially in areas near Russia, which makes sense. Whenever I struggle to find Google Street View imagery of Ukrainian locations on Google Maps, I just switch to Yandex Maps and most of the time I find what I'm looking for. This is one of these times I'm going to show you. You can see this is Mariupol. Just zoom out a bit. Mariupol, you can see it. We grab our little and there is no street view available. There's panoramic images, but that's not what we're looking for. There is no street view, but that's okay. Don't need that. We go to Yandex. We have Maripol again. Zoom in a bit. Click in panoramic. Look at that. Street view in so many places, almost covering, I don't know, half the city. And we have street view on the location we're looking for. Isn't this useful? 
According to Yandex Maps, as seen below, they have street view images available off the road and around the monument. Perfect! So, jumping onto the road on Yandex Maps, we get this view. It's very similar to the frame from the footage, so let's compare them below. See if we can see all of it. At the top, we have a screenshot of the Yandex street view of the area. At the bottom, we have a frame of the video we are attempting to geolocate. Starting from the left, we can see highlighted in green. Here you go. And here we go. The monument we had visualized below in a photo on Google Earth Pro. Next to it, we have the road separations. There you go, in blue. And behind the military vehicle in the first image, we can see the zebra crossing. There you go, zebra crossing and a bit of the zebra crossing as well. On the right, we can also match the street light that has been partially painted in white, similar to the trees. Look at that, there's a bit of white painted around there, it stops there. We can confidently claim that the person recording the footage on the second part of the video, so geolocation 2, was on the following coordinates. Here we go, this is where they were. And now, geolocation 1. Now that we have finished geolocating the easy part of the video, let's try to find out where Kadirov's men were on the first part of the video. It's quite likely that they were not too far from our previous location, so let's just look around a bit and try to match the satellite view with some of the landmarks visible on the video. On the frame below, we can observe the mountain hill, still in the distance, and because we have geolocated the other part of the video, we know that the road, which is highlighted in blue, should be in the direction marked below, so in this direction here. Another interesting thing is that the building is not parallel to the road, so this building is not parallel to the road, as I've seen the majority of them in satellite view before. This will hopefully help me narrow it down quite quickly, and I'll show you what I mean. We grab Google Earth Pro, move it again, this way. So this is where we were first, you located this one, and you can see they're all parallel to rows, parallel, 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 parallel. Hmm, not parallel. Isn't that interesting? Using Google Earth Pro again, this is what we see below. Our pin, here you go, marks the previous geolocation, the 2 1. In light blue is the road, and in Fuchsia, we see buildings in a direction similar to the ones from the video. See, not parallel to the road. You might have noticed above that there are not that many icons near our area of interest with photos submitted to Google Earth Pro by users. We only need one to be useful and sometimes I'm lucky, so let's just give it a go. So you can see this picture there, picture there, and that is it. In the photo below, look at that, that one, I spotted something quite interesting. You cannot see very well, but I'll show you. Let's open up, zoom in on the feature that caught my attention. I have highlighted in right below this. I'm not sure if you remember that from the video, but this will be very useful for us. If you watch the video, you might have noticed the intriguing frame below. Look at that. At the time, the structure caught my attention because it stood out so much. I wasn't sure what I was looking at, but my first guess was that it was part of a small playground. After looking at so many bombed residential areas in Ukraine, I've noticed that places with tall apartment buildings tend to have a small playground at the bottom, usually in the grassy slash woody area in a centralized location. They are notoriously hard to geolocate because there are often not that many photos of them and never street view available. The two images above give us a good comparison platform, so let's attempt to verify our geolocation guess. Verifying geolocation 1. Looking at both the images below, this is what you'll see. Highlighted in green, we see the structure that caught my eye. There you go. In dark blue, above the door, you go this bit, this bit, we see a long rectangular window. Next to it, on the right, in light blue, there you go, that section and that section there, we can count three sets of windows between the door, that door is there, and the end of the building. So it's not very visible here because of the tree, but you can see there's one, two, three, one, two, three, there's three sets of them. 
Then on the other side, we can observe a window with a white frame across the middle. There's a white frame. It's very small, but you can see it. Which Look at that. Also there. There are a few other similarities that I have not marked, but these are already more than enough to get a confirmation. We also know that the Chechen men were taking cover in some sort of small structure in between the buildings. The presence of such a building can also be confirmed by the satellite image on Google Earth Pro below. So you can have this is the building where they were taking cover. I still have the telegram video here so I can show you where they were taking cover. It was about here. See? So they're taking cover on this building with a pin I marked where the men were when the recording started in green where the metal frame, there you go, this one, we saw in the pictures and in Fushia the shape of the building they had in front of them. So with all of these confirmations, we have verify our geolocation one with its coordinates. There you go. Distance between the points. Now that we have geolocation points, we can quickly calculate the distance between them using Google Maps. For that, I use the coordinates from the geolocation two point, right click it and select measure distance. Then I selected the second point, geolocation 1, and Google quickly tells me it's about half a kilometer between them. And I can show you how that is in practice. So you right click more or less where it would be, measure distance, see this last option, and then you just go to the other distance you want, about there, and they'll tell you this one is 600 meters away. Off you go. Direction of travel. If we were to assume that the first part of the video was filmed first and the second part was filmed afterwards, we would have to conclude that the Chechen men were moving west towards the center of Mariupol. But would that be true? Were they even filmed on the same day? For that, we can analyze the shadows on the ground. In the first part of the video, we even see the sun peeking through the high rise building. And in a second part of the video, even though we can see the sun, we can see this casting shadow on the trees near the road. We could analyze this video a lot more, but at this point I fear this is already a very long post and shadow analysis is definitely material for another day. I hope you enjoyed this 2 for 1 geolocation. Thank you for listening. Sophia.